Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? So in today's video we have a couple of unexpected pieces of news coming out of the PTS server. So there are going to be some changes from the look of things to the currency system, specifically looking at Legendary Script and Gold Bullion first and foremost, but there's also some changes coming to the cap system as well, which is very, very interesting to have a look at. And following that we're also going to take a look at the new rewards available in Season 3, or that will be available, which is called the Scribe of Avalon. So let's jump in and take a look, shall we? Okay then, so, as I say, some very unexpected news here. So first up, the changes to the currency. I'd like to give a little shout out here to Reaper, who dropped into the stream last night to give me a heads up on that. I would give your uh, full name there, but unfortunately YouTube has yet to process the chat on that particular stream, so I can't look it up. But, nonetheless, dropped in last night and gave me a heads up that this was actually occurring, which came as quite the surprise to me. I'm very surprised to see Bethesda changing the currency system at all. It's uh, not something they've been keen to do in the past. The idea being that it basically extends the lifespan of the game. If you can, can't get things as fast, you have to log in on more days over a longer period in order to get that high-end gear that you want in order to max out your character. But uh, this will speed it up, which is an odd choice given that um, Bethesda still have limits on just how fast they can put new content out. So my concern there would be that uh, it's going to basically have people dropping off faster. They're coming in for, obviously, the score and the um, season pass and everything. But once you get through that, there's, again, going to be less reason to keep grinding out and levelling up your character and keep playing, basically, once you've got through the new content. On the other hand, the other major concern that um, ha comes from increasing the amount of currency available to players is inflation, and the way they've gone about this should avoid that, so maybe not too much of a problem there. So what they've actually done is they have increased the number of caps available at robot vendors throughout the game so you've now got double the number of caps that you can get from them on a daily basis so every time you turn up and you want to sell stuff you can now sell twice as much what they haven't changed however is the amount the player can have so that's going to keep the inflation thing under control but it does mean that uh, you can get and then conversely spend your caps that much faster which speeds up the cycle personally i don't think that's necessarily a great change i don't think it's that significant there's only so much that's worth spending your caps on in game at the minute anyway obviously if you go to play a vending you can get those legendaries maybe that you haven't picked up through the rng of the script system but um beyond that apart from plans really there's not a right lot that you want to be buying from robot vendors anyway the odd exception to sort of speed your way through score and things like that maybe so not a massive change there but a slightly odd one i'm still trying to figure out what I think and feel about this. It's a bit odd. Um, they have also changed the gold bullion system. So once again, you also are able to get double the amount of gold bullion that you were previously. Obviously, this is all on the public test server just now. It's not in main game. And as to whether or not it will come with Steel Dawn, not really sure. Bethesda haven't said anything. But uh, there we go. So right now, you can pick up twice the amount of gold bullion that you could before. Um, it's on a daily basis, obviously. You turn your treasury notes in and get twice as many as before. So you can get to that high-end gear a little bit faster. Um, not sure how much of a difference that makes. I mean, it doesn't affect the rate you can spend it at. Once you've got it, you can spend it. But um, I'm guessing because there is a whole load more stuff coming into the bullion system, or I would expect a whole load more stuff to come into the bullion system, along with Steel Dawn, that maybe that's why they're increasing it, so that pe because people have more to spend their money on. But again, not too sure about that. Again, I'm concerned about the lifespan aspect there. But uh, one thing they haven't changed on that is the amount of gold bullion that Smiley has every week. So if you head over to the Wayward, you can buy up to 300 gold bullion for caps and uh, top your amount of bullion up that way every week. But that is still currently sat at the same level it was before. It hasn't changed. Don't know if that's an oversight from Bethesda or if they're planning to keep it there just to kind of limit the change or not. But um, it is what it is. That is still the same for the moment. So the third thing they've changed in terms of currency is Legendary Scrap. Previously, you were able to pick up 150 Legendary Scrap from uh, Legendary Exchange Machines every time you turn in your unwanted Legendaries on a daily basis. That has also been doubled, so you can now gain 300. Once again, though, as far as I'm aware, they have not changed the amount of Scrap a player can hold. So you're still limited to 1,000, which means you're going to hit that 1,000 twice as fast. And you'll have to head off to the Rusty Pick to either buy more Legendaries from the Purveyor, um, and then sell any you don't want, or script them. Or you can buy legendary modules if you want to get legendary versions of bullion gear. So, again, a bit of a strange feeling here. It kind of helps you get rid of the unwanted legendaries a bit quicker, which is good, because 
ending up with an absolute stack of them and then being over encumbered and not being able to get rid of them and filling your stash up and all that is a bit of a problem at the moment particularly with some of the legendary sales that have been going on and some of the events like uh, hunt for the treasure hunter and the upcoming holy scorched event that are going to drop a lot of legendaries often does wind up with you carrying way more than you can script and way more than you can sell and that can be a bit of an issue so that's a good change from that perspective again in terms of the sort of speeding up progress it does speed it up a bit but it kind of doesn't because you're still limited at the same time so it's a strange change i'm hoping that it, the major difference is going to be the carry weight side of things but we'll see what happens there i guess on down the line yeah, bit of an odd one. Not sure how I feel about it, but uh, interesting nonetheless. I know a good few people will be happy to have the extra, at the very least, script per day and the extra bullion to push through that system a little bit faster. But uh, there we go. It is what it is. That's very, very cool to know about. So the other piece of information we have today, as I said, was the new season is up on the test server. We take a little look at the various rewards available in the next season which is called the scribe of avalon which is an interesting thing a lot of people have suggested it's got a doctor who vibe but we'll have to have a look and see what's going on so let's jump into the scoreboard and see what they've got for us so intrepid time traveling historian okay fair enough getting the uh <laughs> doctor who vibe there kd inkwell it's the atomic chronicles of kd inkwell hmm interesting cool so um, there is actually a big pop-up that will come in here the first time you get into it. I strongly suggest actually taking a look at it because I kind of skipped past it and intended to come back to it and it hasn't reappeared. So there's obviously some information there that I'm missing out on, which is a bit unfortunate. But in terms of the new board and the new stuff available, the major reason they want to test this out from what I understand is that um, there are a couple of new reward types in here, specifically Camp Allies. Uh, there is a medic and there is a chef that instead of the usual giving you quests to go find legendaries or whatever they're going to provide services at your camp so a medic obviously will heal you get rid of your rads or like good stuff if you want them to and the chef will cook meals for you so a bit of a different take there i'm guessing they've included it on the pest on the public test server the pest server i keep calling it that for some weird reason they're including it on the pts anyway so that you can test that out if you're on bethesda now on pc so there we go We've got some cool stuff here. The Valorous, Alistair, and the Sword of Avalon. That looks quite cool. I'm liking this board. It's um, kind of a retro, interesting look to the art style, which is very, very cool. Keeping the uh, same background layout as per. Discover the secret technology of the round table. Um, he loose describes Sinok. It's an interesting uh, play on somewhere between Merlin and Yoda going on here, I think, uh, with a little bit of an ET vibe. Possibly a uh, Zaytans appearing on Earth through history thing, which we know they did from Fallout 3 in the Mothership Zeta DLC. Very cool. Scribe of Avalon Volume 101. Outstandingly awesome tales. Sticking with the comics and the board game stuff. Cool. So, here we go. Player starts here. KD Inkwell icon, which is cool. That's really nice. I like the style of that. The art on it. Very, very cool. Got some um, turbo fer fertilizer. So, um, that's apparently... At it's listed as ammunition, which is weird. So, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Uh, thrown similar to grenade, only affects plants. Uh, granted when entering adventure mode. So, fertilizer grenade. A little help down on the farm. Interesting. Does that make your plants grow faster or respawn their. Um, possibly the uh, stuff you can get from them? You know, if you're harvesting corn, for example, you can get corn more often if you lob a grenade at them. That's an interesting idea. Very different. Certainly uh, helpful when you're on the brink of starving, but given that they're reversing the way food and drink works and that you'll no longer be taking penalties for not being fed and watered, you just won't get additional bonuses. Less significant, but um, hmm, interesting nonetheless. You get uh, additive bonuses rather than negative penalties with the new system coming in with Steel Dawn. So, bubblegum, fair enough. Antique speed bag. <laughs> That's cool, new camp item. Punching bag, very, very cool. Don't know if that'll actually function or not, but uh, very interesting nonetheless. So it looks pretty cool. Definitely got that antique vibe going on. That's a cool Roman-looking set of armor. I'm guessing that's going to appear. Interesting. And we've got a Fallout First camera mode that you can get here as well. So if you've got Fallout First, you get some extra bonuses along with this particular rank as well. Uh, Brotherhood of Steel photo mode frame. Okay, that's cool. So they're adding in little extra bits and pieces for... Those who have Fallout first, which is good, because, um, yeah, good extra to have stuff for those who are subscribing. So, 
Makes sense, and it also doesn't deprive anybody who isn't doing either. It's just some extra stuff for those players, so that's cool. So, clean office, office cabinet, so filing cabinet there, it's clean. Uh, not totally sold on that, but uh, I do like these cabinets. They snap together well. They're quite handy for various things in camp building. So, some lunch boxes. Vault bed. So, slightly different style of the vault tech bed there. Got a little bit more um, detail on the mattress there. And a bit more on the pillows as well, as well as the Voltec logo at the top. That's cool. So reskin of the existing one. So not blown away because we've got the existing one, but that's nice. What else have we got? Some supply packages. So that's crafting materials. And some atoms. I've got a sneaking suspicion from this that we might be getting less atoms than we did last time. But that's just a mild hunch. So what ranks this one? 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Rank 9. Okay, maybe not. Even though we're up here as well. I'm guessing that's just the... Uh, be getting the wrong impression there. So, some caps, two and a half thousand, not too bad. And some repair kits, meh. And a Brotherhood icon from the look of this for full up first players. Very cool. Wouldn't mind that myself, actually. So, more crafting supplies. And we have our first weapon skin, the Sportsman's Paint for the Pump Action Shotgun. That's quite cool. Nice little wood effect on it. I don't think it's cooler than what we have already, but uh, if you're into that sort of old-school hunting look for a hunting-type character, that'd certainly be pretty cool. Goes well with that outfit, as they've uh, aptly shown there. Not such a great picture there, but yeah, very, very cool. So, following that, we've got a perk card pack, some legendary script, more lunchboxes, and our first power armor paint, the gilded... guild, rather, T45 paint. Okay, so these ones are usually simpler than the big one at the end, but... That's quite cool. I like the little logo on that. Only T51 skins are available in Nuclear Winter. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, that's cool. So it's relatively plain but with a nice little decal on it if you want to stick with the basic look but with a little bit of extra style. Nice. So there we have a Vault Nightstand, which is cool. Some extra decoration stuff for the camp. Always welcome. A couple extra shelves. Still going to be a nightmare to put anything on those shelves, but uh, hopefully we'll get that improved in time. And then we have some more atoms and some more lunchboxes for our first members. Gold bullion coming in at rank uh, 20, I'm guessing this is. So then we have our Daring Adventures photo mode frame. Cool if you're into that sort of thing. I don't tend to use them, to be honest, but uh, they are quite cool. Go places never seen before with KD Inkwell. Uh, some more bubblegum. Useful being as you need cheap bubblegum for score every so often. Clean hospital bed. That's okay. Nice if you want that. Again, I'm not so bothered about whether or not it's clean. I'd rather have new styles, personally, but that's that's nice. And beds with bedding would be good as well, definitely. But that's quite a cool little addition. We'll go with the other clean stuff that we're getting added. He has been Chowdhury. So here is our first new camp um, ally. So she's a chef that makes your camp feel like home. So a little icon for her there. To say she'll cook you a meal if you've got her in your camp. That's where the first one is, up here at rank, um, I'm thinking that's 25. Makes about sense. And then we get on to more perk cards, more lunch boxes, and the T51 guild paint. So much the same. Ooh, a little bit of extra detail on the shoulders there. That's nice. The outline's being picked out. I like that. It's pretty uh, slick looking. Same around on the uh, wrists a little bit as well. Although it's more like they're darkened inside than picked out, which is cool. That's not a bad look. Quite nice. So, a vault desk. New uh, skin to this one. We've already got this in-game anyway, but... Uh, a little bit of extra texture on here, a little bit of colour, change the style up, which is nice, could be a little variation. Uh, more atoms, more caps, and Red Rocket Flare. This is an odd thing that they've been adding. It's starting to appear in other games as well, sort of online games. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege is a big example in recent, uh, the last year or so. Little flares, they normally go with guns in other games, but in this case I think they're hooked to your backpacks. So you get little, basically, key rings on your backpacks. First one being the Red Rocket here, quite nice. Not sure how I feel about that, I'm not too bothered really, but uh, if you do want a couple of those on your backpack, I'm going to personalise it a little bit more, very cool. So, where were we? There we are, okay. So, we've got some scrap kits, <laughs> barbarian hordes abound. Katie Inkwell's quill, okay, what's that? Oh, player icon. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing more and more of this Doctor Who vibe, that looks suspiciously like a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> So there we go, more perk cards, and herringbone wood floors. A slightly different texture of flooring for Fallout First members there. A little jealous, but uh, it's not that different to some of the stuff we've got already, so not a big loss if you don't have Fallout First. Some script, more lunchboxes, 
Excavator Guild paint. This is interesting. You lose the chest icon because you've got the big uh, thing on the excavator's chest, but this you've got the eyeballs on the shoulders, which are making me think Resident Evil, if I'm honest. But quite, quite cool there. A couple of little details picked out on it as well. It's not too bad. Not as good as the T51. I like the little bit of detail in the mask, though. That's nice. Very cool. Clean industrial fan. Ooh, a little bit of wall decor there. Now, I'm liking that. That's huge, though. That looks very, very large. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not sure how we feel about this, or at least the size of it, but um, some extra wall decor is always cool. Extra items just to make your camp look that a little bit more interesting. Not sure I'd put something so colourful on a brick wall, but yeah, that's cool. Some more atoms, some more gold bullion, and we have inkwell quill paint for the baton. So that's the uh, police baton you get in game. Not a particularly good weapon. But uh, actually, one of my characters is using it at the moment, mostly for the absurdity of it. You just occasionally have to bash things, so why not? But uh, I do like the skin, nonetheless. That's quite cool. And you've even got the little uh, fountain pen nib on there as well, which is quite cool. Uh, that's an interesting idea. It'll switch on it, turn it on and off as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's quite fun. I like that. So, more bubble gum. New photo mode pose taking off. We should be leaping into the air with a uh, fist raised there. Very cool. Get into such things. Nice. Some more perk card packs. Black mat flooring. So presumably supposed to be a rubber mat style of flooring. Oh, it's, it actually is a um, rug rather than anything else. That's quite cool. Yeah, that does look like it'll go well in the vault. And also good for, as we can see here, putting under different uh, benches. Makes sense to have a little rubber bit of flooring to contrast so it's not just sat straight on the floor. Mind you, it's still going to melt through, but nonetheless, that's quite cool like that more lunch boxes t60 paint now we're talking now this is what we want to see very very cool light like, a little bit of detail that's cool the gold on the handles there is quite cool as well a little bit picked out in gold very nice so as the icon there just looking a little bit cooler than some of the previous paints have from the mid uh, portions of the uh, season so that's very cool more atoms we've got solomon hardy he's the next uh, camp ally that is going to be added he is a doctor he can basically provide medical services at your camp rather than quests so that's very very cool that's the icon for him there and fallout first players will also get some extra launch boxes there so very cool as i said before this is what they're wanting to test which is why it's on the pts right now so here we have 150 atoms 2500 caps and a clean toilet that we've been waiting for for a long time this has been in um, the pts for a little while but now a lot of people will be happy to have that Goes with the clean sink we've got available from the previous season. You know, slightly cleaner looking in the bathroom. There we go, very nice. Although, you know, I might have put it closer to the wall than it looks like it's actually plumbed in. <laughs> so, a bit more bubble gum, perk car packs, and we have a new weapon skin. So, this is uh, 10 mil paint, Settler Special. Okay, not a fan personally. Not a big fan of orange generally, to be honest, but uh, orange and blue is an odd com color combination for my in my opinion, to each their own, if you like that. It does stand out, that's cool. I do like the 10mm looks. Not so much this one, but I like the, the bulkier look of it. That's quite cool. Not anything new, but cool nonetheless. So, more lunchboxes. X01 paint, the guild one. Again, a few more details picked out here. Less gold on this, which is interesting, given that it's uh, Enclave Armour. You'd think they'd have a bit more gold on there, but uh, there we go. Nice dark paint with uh, a little bit of detailing. Okay. So like in the T60, might be biased. <laughs> vault tile white floors. Okay, so white tile floors. That'd be good for bathrooms and kitchens and the like. Particularly bathrooms, that's nice. Definitely looking forward to that. 150 atoms, 250 scrip, scrap kits. Ooh, sign out common reward. So this looks like, yeah, it's a player icon. So we've got our E.T. Zayton, little bit of Yoda fella going on. Definitely would like to know more about this character. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess we're going to get some more stuff. I'm assuming he's a villain. And we're going to see some more villain-related packs appearing in the Atomic Shop related to this guy. Like we did with Grelok. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Legendary modules. Always cool. So, perk card packs. And an American helmet for those who have Fallout first. Which is quite cool. The same as the green one we got in the current season. Which is fine. It's a bit bland. But this one's a, a red and blue version of it. Red, white and blue. Just a bow. There we go. Very cool. American tank helmet. So, vintage tackle box. 
So, loot bag. It's a fishing tackle box. Okay, that's fun. It's going to be kind of hard to see if it ends up in long grass, I think. Particularly with it being green. But that's uh, stylized and quite interesting. That's cool. Get into that sort of thing. More bubblegum. And the ultrasight paint. Which is, again, no, this isn't bad. The little green details are quite cool on here. A little bit like the excavator. Again, stuff picked out in the uh, lighter colour here and the logo. Quite cool. Still thinking like the T6 a bit more. Oh, we've got a little bit of gold around here. It's nice. Yeah, cool. Into your ultra site. There we go. Vintage shelter wallpaper. Classic look to your camp or shelter with this vintage wallpaper. So at least we know wallpaper's going into shelters. There we go. That's fine. Not the biggest fan personally, but that's fine. I might find the right uh, camp to put that in. Maybe if you're doing sort of a, a hunting cabin vibe or something like that. So we have more atoms. More gold bullion. And a Screaming Eagle wood skin. So this is a, the uh, Screaming Eagle skin for the handmade. It's quite cool. It's a bit more of a, a realistic look to it. Let's, um, well, a bit more of a, what it's called, a bit more M16 and a bit less Kalashnikov, I suppose. It's actually more what I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, it's quite cool. Give it a little uh, wood tone to it. So we haven't got any more detail there. So Screaming Eagle is probably a stretch because you haven't got the icon on it. But uh, well, that's fine if you want a little bit more of an organic look to your handmade. I quite like the black one at the moment, but there we go. So, more legendary modules. Voltec floor. Okay, carpet. Voltec carpet for your camp. That's quite cool if you're going for a Voltec theme build. And not sold entirely myself, but it does look good. A little bit cleaner. Nice. Also, a little bit worn, which is just about right for fallouts. That's quite cool. So, more perk cards. Red Rocket Mini Mart. So, oh, new vendor skins. Okay, I'm liking this. I hope it doesn't make annoying noises. <laughs> Bring the legendary convenience of Red Rocket to your customers. Safety and service guaranteed. Neither actually guaranteed. <laughs> I like it. Red Rocket reserves the right to terminate offending parties. <laughs> Cannot be built inside of a shelter because what would be the point? Maybe you'll see it on their map. There we go. That's quite nice. I like that um, vendor skin. Looks like it might be considerably taller than the vendors usually are, though. So that's something to bear in mind if you have any inside. But yeah, that's cool. Definitely want to get my hands on that. So more lunch boxes. T65 paint. Guild one. Again, a little bit of detail, a little bit of gold. Nice. That, that's quite cool. I would have gone with a slightly different angle personally on that, but there we go. There we go. If you're into your T65, definitely a decent look there. Not too shabby. And Wasteland Gong. Oh, that's cool. If you're doing a Raider build. Giant circular saw as a gong. I like that. That would sound horrible. But it's kind of brilliant and very Raider-y. I like it a lot. Definitely want that. No more atoms. More lunchboxes for Fallout first players. Script. Vault fireplace. Okay. So this will go inside your, ca your camp shelters quite nicely. Very clean looking fireplace. So stove fireplace. Looking cool. Not sure how it's going to light up the night if it's got a closed door on it with no window, but, you know. <laughs> Either way, nice clean skin if you want an extra fireplace. And it's always worth having, because they do have that homely touch. Scrap kits. Jumping um, photo mode. Pose. <laughs> be a bit weird seeing a character randomly floating in the air, I imagine. But nonetheless, quite cool if you're into that. Another photo mode pose. Some more perk cards. Armor Ace Flare. Okay, now we're talking. Bit late, but better late than never. That's quite cool. I like the look of this. This, again, is going to go on uh, a backpack rather than anything else, but that would look quite cool as a, a weapon charm. <laughs> yeah, that I could see myself actually using more than the Red Rocket one. It's a bit more subtle and understated, so I like that. But that's going to be applied to most backpacks, so there's probably some that just won't work with because of the shape of them, but that's cool. Uh, where was it? Uh, up there. Okay. No more bubblegum. Vertiguard jetpack. So, a couple of people mentioned this one to me already. Basically strapping a small vertibird to your back for your jetpack. That's absurd, and I love it. Like, that really works. Yeah, it looks quite good on the excavator as well. It's, from the back, it just makes you look like an absolute machine, which is really cool. Definitely a fan of that. I have to get some jetpack to plans for my armor at some point, but that does mean losing some other things that I like having, so... But very, very cool nonetheless. That It's ridiculous and I love it. <laughs> Definitely a fan of that. So, scavenge station gold bot. So, a gold collectron for your uh, camp. Fair enough. Bit creepy in the style of the uh, insult bot there. 
They're newly reskinned for wastelanders in salt pots. That's very cool. More atoms, more bullion. Inkwell's backpack, which is, uh, yeah, that's fine. They've got a few little details, nothing spectacular. It's kind of like a, a communicator type thing, sort of radio backpack with some extra bits and pieces on it. That's cool. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be some kind of time machine, I don't know. <laughs> Portable time machine. Chronotron backpack, yeah, I'm going to go with that as a, the idea behind it. Yeah, that's cool. Again, it's kind of similar to the one that we'll be able to buy from Brotherhood, but a little bit smaller, the tactical one. The going to um, sell through Bethesda Net with the, uh, or as part of the pack through Bethesda Net with uh, the launch of Steel Door. Yeah, okay. Not my sort of thing really, but quite cool. So that is somewhere around here. So there we go. Presidential paint for the Gauss rifle. That's quite cool. That's a bit nicer than the orange and black one they had for Halloween. Nice uh, Stars and Stripes vibe. Would like to go rotate that around and see it a little better. Not particularly helpful picture, but all in all, yeah, I like that. That's quite cool. Looking good. So, coming up to the final few ranks here. Put coins, always handy. And clandestine service paint for those who have Fallout first. Now, I'm fairly confident this was an Atomic Shop item that dropped in here, which they said they weren't going to do, but as a Fallout first additional bonus, I'm assuming this was added uh, somewhat at the last minute because they were running out of things to add for Fallout first players. I can kind of see why they've done that, but yeah, okay. If you want that uh, entirely slick black matte look for your T65 and your Fallout first player. Guild of Antiquity Stein. So another new Stein to put into your camp. Very cool. I actually quite like the look of this. A um, little bit of gold detailing there. That's really nice. Uh, I suppose it's supposed to be a horse's head, but uh, yeah, that looks really cool. A nice little bit of detail to that. It looks good and a nice job on that. A little bit of detail here is really nice as well. Very cool. So, lunch boxes. Quite nice to have. Ten or well, nine, nearly ten. Very cool. Ooh, KD Inkwell's outfit. There we go, now we're talking. That's quite nice, actually. I can see a lot of people being into that. We were sneaking suspicion. Um, Zero Fox might be into this as well, definitely for his uh, photos. But that's quite cool. I like the look of that. That's really a nice looking outfit. I hope the detailing around the straps is a little bit better picked out on the outfit in game as opposed to here. Because it's not as sharp as it could be in this image. But we'll see. Hopefully the textures look good on that. Then we have the vault door. A regular vault door door. You know, the regular size one as opposed to a massive get one. Which is cool. Definitely looking forward to having that. That'll be cool for some camp builds. And finally, the Scribe of Avalon bundle for rank 100. Unfortunately, we have no pictures beyond the fact that we've got the Vertigard power armor. So I'm assuming that's a skin. That'll be interesting to see when it finally comes out. So watch the space on that one. The Scribe of Avalon game board and 500 atoms. These rank 100 lists seem to be getting shorter each season. Which I'm not entirely uh, blown away by. But there's that. <laughs> but nonetheless, very cool. We'll look forward to seeing what this paint looks like. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, definitely like the look of this. That's quite cool. <laughs> all in all, quite a fan of that game board. Some good stuff in there, not quite as blown away as perhaps the first time around. Maybe I'm getting used to it, maybe not. Some of the new skins for Power Armor are looking good. Some of the other bits and pieces are quite nice, but uh, yeah, all in all, some fairly cool stuff. Interesting news regarding the uh, changes to the currency system. Not entirely sure how I feel about that, we'll have to see. But uh, I thought you folks might be interested to hear a bit more about that. Now I've had a little look and confirmed that it is, at least on the PTS. And yeah, some interesting rewards, some cool stuff coming from the new season, the... Uh, Scribe of Avalon, it being called. KD Inkwell and a time-travelling historian stuff going on. Very cool. Interesting character, definitely. So, looking forward to jumping into that season. Good to see a few little additions for Fallout First members as well. It's nice to have a little like, something extra, given that they are paying for something extra. So, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, looking forward to jumping into this. It's going to be about two weeks in. I believe it's the 15th of December this starts. So, looking forward to that. We've confirmed from the uh, community calendar that the final week of the current season Armor Ace and the Power Patrol will be running up to the 7th of December so it'll be the first week of December obviously that's going to be a double score week so there's got to be a season running at that point then it's um, I believe a week between that and the start of the new season and they usually do have downtime between them that's less than usual but nonetheless I suppose they want to get people back in and playing as quickly as possible so Still got a little bit of time and another double score week if you are struggling to get to the end of the current season. You've got a good shot at getting to the end of that, which is very, very cool. But I think a lot of people are there already. 
So, this is quite long enough, so I'm going to uh, head off now. So, thank you very much for watching. Do hope you found this useful and informative. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. It's always very, very much appreciated. Very, very helpful. Social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all available down below the video as well. If you want to support the channel in that way, it is massively, massively appreciated. Very, very helpful. So, huge thanks to everybody who's done that already. And if you get the chance, do join us for live streams as well. We're having a lot of fun playing Fallout, playing Horizon Zero Dawn, playing Prey, and looking forward to, if it ever gets released, Cyberpunk, hopefully, in December. So I do hope you make it for those. For now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.